Welcome to Coffee and Books. My name is Beth Tarrow. I'm the U.S. Picture Book Editor with North South Books. And I'm so happy to have uh, author Monica Brown and illustrator John Para with me today. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Thanks morning. for being here. Um, we're here today to talk about an amazing book that uh, uh, Monica and John worked on together called Frida Kahlo and Her Animalitos. Thank you, John. <laughs> there it is. Right, and we also have it available in Spanish, so we're really excited to talk about this. Um, and since this is our tradition with coffee and books, we're going to start off with the question, what is your favorite warm beverage? Guys, do you have a favorite? I'm going to go first because not only do I have a favorite warm beverage, but I have it in one of my favorite mugs <laughs> by none other than the amazing John Para. Uh, coffee is my also my favorite just way of life, really. And thanks to John, I get to see uh, a character, young Frida, that he created based on our my words and our collaboration. So cheers, John and Beth, for this wonderful book we all created together. That's great. And John? Um, yeah, I'm a coffee guy. So, you know, especially in the morning, I got to warm up and um, usually... Uh, Costello coffee is the choice of coffee. And um, yeah, so it keeps me going, keeps me working hard and uh, I can't live without it. So feels good. That's great. John and Monica, you guys have worked together before and you make magic together. And I'm wondering uh, what makes for such a good collaboration? How do you do that? People like John who are so gifted um, but also seem to share the same sort of vision for what we want to put in the hearts, minds, and hands of children. Also, John is a kind and sensitive person, and Frida was a very personal book for me. It was inspired by my mother, who dealt with incredible hardship and chronic illness and pain and multiple operations. So she found uh, solace and inspiration in Frida Kahlo. And I actually wrote this book in homage to her. So because it was a project close to my heart, I wanted and I hoped to have someone who was not only a good friend, but a brilliant, sensitive artist that could capture her life for children. So those are some of the reasons I like collaborating with John Para. Wow. Um, That's really nice. <laughs> thank you for that, Mike. I mean, it really is. It's such a wonderful uh, privilege and honor to work with Monica's, you know, uh, writing. It's, and she makes it so, so easy to just get in the creative mindset. And, um, you know, visually, once I start reading her manuscripts, I, I just start picturing the pictures right away. And that's, that's the sign that I really want to work on a project. So if I don't start seeing the, the images in my head, it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit of a slower start for me, but with Monica's words and her, the way she describes things um, and presents things is just, is magic. And um, I try to take that magic that she's put on the page and, and add to it and just compliment it. I'm, I don't want to compete with the words. I don't want to compete with sort of the, sort of that, what she's saying, I want to compliment it and just make it as beautiful as possible and kind of just bring it out in a sense. So um, that that's sort of my goal for, for all my books. I remember when I was first um, offered the book, I was like, oh boy, Frida Kahlo. It was like, it was very intimidating um, aside from, you know, aside from the story. So it's, it's because it's Frida Kahlo and she's so important and so important to, you know, many, many people, including myself, we grew up with her art, we grew up with um, that legacy. And, um, you know, I, there, there's always that fear, you know, am I going to do it justice? Am I going to, am I going to do a good enough job that people will, you know, respect the, the work in it? And, um, you know, so that's always uh, starts, but then you kind of like have to kick those those feelings a little bit to the side and just push on and um, start with the research, start with the, the the images, start with the drawing. I'm just you just get in a rhythm and the flow. And again, with Monica's words uh, that are just magic, and the research and the the homework that you do and the sketching that you do and the and just 
just going for 100 percent um i knew i had to just go dive into it fully fully and you guys found a really unique uh window into uh, into her life i mean it's talking about her um, extraordinary life but also kind of the pets that she loved and kind of influenced her and helped her and uh, Monica where did you get the idea to do that so the approach I decided to take as someone who also has suffered from uh, chronic illness was the positive aspect of her animalitos her animal muses and all the comfort they brought her an inspiration and love. That is where I found the inspiration in thinking about how and why this extraordinary talent was able to still create art in the midst of suffering. And in part, that was because of the warmth and um, companionship of her animalitas. Well, that was the thing that I loved the most about it. You know, we have many pets here at our house and uh, it was a muse for her and her art. That's wonderful. Now, John, do you have a favorite spread? This page right here. Oh. And it's sort of the introduction uh, to Frida and, and it's about her and, it, and she's of course as a little girl drawing. And I, and I, I, I just, I'm, you know, I connect with it obviously, you know, as a, you know, growing up as a child, drawing all the time. And I love that she's sort of coming in from the top, you know, and I was explaining to, I think the art director, you know, or somebody, I forgot I was explaining to how she's coming in almost at a different angle. So she already has a child, she has a different view of the world, you know, instead of just like presenting her flat or sort of normal view of the world, she's coming in from like the top and just hanging down and, and then drawing these drawings and they're all over the place. And it's just, and there's sort of like these references that are gonna, you know, show up maybe later in her life, you know, like, you know, obviously the animals that will show up and become part of her life. So I like to do a lot of foreshadowing um, when I'm working on books and, and kind of presenting these little clues in the beginning. Thanks so much to you both. It's been such a pleasure talking with you and it was certainly a joy working with you guys on this book. And I hope we can work on something again soon. Yes, so thank you for letting me and John and I revisit this beautiful project. Great. Thank you.